Hello and welcome to This and That. I'm Dave Lees. And I'm Jonathan Byer. Hi, Dave. Hello and welcome to The Skating Lesson. We are going to discuss everything that's been going on in the skating world this week. So little, so much has happened, so much excitement. What a week, lots to discuss. Oh my God. So if you're new here, please subscribe below and smash that like button. We'll do it together. You hover your finger over the button right now. Let it go. Let it go. Let's press. Oh, oh my God. That this felt is, good, Dave. That this felt good. Is the kind of validation that a Terry gets when a girl comes crawling back to her. They come crawling, <laughs> all come crawling back, just like men in our lives. These dramatic <laughs> girls. Oh my God. Jonathan, I have to tell you, the fan comments are out of control because people feel very conflicted. I, I, this is a very conflicting issue, and we're going to have to talk it out because I have I conflicting issues of my own. Aljana Kostrnaya was the beloved darling last season. This week she is in Russia, very bad girl, very ungrateful, very stupid, you know, like uh, Sterpa. Like, you know, she's bad, bad girl. Like, go to Plushenka. Like, Galina was like loving that. I think that okay. any coach who has ever done a lot for a student and then had them leave them is like feels completely like validated and it brings up so many like emotions because of, you know, in other cultures, you know, in America, it's true. Like you, you try to get, you, you really hire a coach. Like at the end of the day, you hire them. And unless it's like someone like Frank Carroll who you're like on a waiting list to get a lesson from, and I don't know that you literally have to be on a waiting list, but like you ultimately employ the coach at the end of the day. Right. I mean, I mean, it is a two way street. They have to agree, but you make yourself as a US athlete. And Raphael always says this, like the American coach, like you have to hire your own doctor. You have to hire your own choreographer. You have to do the dressmaker. You have to do your, your nutrition. You have to do this. In Russia, a Terry is responsible for all of that. Like that's her responsibility. You know, and you are a member of this system and it's very different. So they take it very differently when someone leaves them. And that's, it's just like the all encompassing nature. So like these, like it is, you know. So I, I have very specific favorite, questions for you. Alina, okay. favorite thing ever. And it's what Coaster Naya mentioned yesterday. And she was bringing it up the other day before. And she was like, yeah, she says that she's smiling so much more with Plushenka. Like, you know, like that was the most like insulting thing to them ever. Like you- Well, let's talk they, about that quote so we can be clear. Made you, they made you a champion. And like you, basically that is like spitting in the face of a Terry. It is considered like so- that inter that interview basically, and of course, it's always what up for translation is. issues. But she was saying she smiles more off the ice now, but she's not smiling because she's not on the podium. Whereas before, she may have been crying off the ice all the time, but she was smiling because she was on the podium. I mean, and if that in and of itself isn't the epitome of sort of the pro problem, <laughs> like, they not see it that way. That's like considered like, duh. Training's hard. Like, I guess as an educator, I just wonder if that has to be that way. Jonathan, you are not cut out for Team Tuparitza. Okay? <laughs> you are just Nor did I ever mean to imply that I was. I would be the first one that's like, get me out of here. Yeah. Oh my God. Oh my God. There is like so much. Um, so yeah. I'm intrigued, Dave, if you're a Terry, like, you know, it's interesting because yeah, we- people, are you asking me like what she gains by taking her back? I keep seeing this comment. People keep writing it to me and I'm confused by what- Well, I'm sort of where, where now, yes, the statement is very strong for Atari that now Costa Naya wants to return because now it's time to get serious again. And I just wonder, Atari's not going to take this unless she thinks it can happen. So she very clearly- has put the, the burden of proof on Kostranaya in these next two months to protect her own reputation. Because I would think like, same thing when she took Medvedeva, I was like, now why would she take Medvedeva if she didn't think she could get her back up and running 
And the answer is, of course, she's not going to get her back up and running. Well, I'm going to make a whole deep dive into it that I started yesterday, but I didn't have the energy to do it like justice, right? I was just okay. like, I, and it requires every ounce of your energy, Dave. It does. I, you know what? I was a little bit like tired that when I did the first one, like it requires a lot. Okay, so the Carolis always took these girls back, like the big talents, Diane Durham. Uh, Christy Phillips, there is nothing that a queen like a Terry loves more than when someone trains with them, leaves, falls out of shape, comes groveling back, and they have to work their ass off to prove themselves, get fit, get in shape, and then this person wins again, and it's just like a complete win-win. Happens every time. And but you have to make sure they win again, though. That's, that's I think, it's sort of- no hard. fault of their own. And no, yeah. it is too not much damage was done while they too left. Much the, damage. Okay. She got okay. fat, ungrateful, lazy. Win win for a Terry. It helps her with the Federation. Um, Costa Diet does have some sort of connection to Lokernik. This has been like bandered about in fan uh, communities, but I actually talked to some uh, some journalists about this. I talked to um, there. There's actually connections that Costa Naya has. It's not exactly what people think. It's been like mistranslated, but there are some like family connections with Costa Naya um, that to come back, like, so within the Federation, the Federation wants to, obviously Ateri is considered the path to victory. I mean, we can't even like explain, like Ateri is Russian skate. Like she's just like, yeah, like she's so all powerful, right? To, for her to take her back. But you also have to, and like a Terry, obviously, I mean, she's, if you 40%, she could take 50% from Costa Naya, like if she wanted, who, like, right, like she's going to make the money. This girl's beloved around the world. She's going to, if she does well for one year, she'll get shows in Japan, shows in Russia, like wherever. Uh, obviously she has to grovel because Russians have never warmed to Costa Naya because she's always had the reputation of being a not, She's not good like my daughter. She's your daughter. Okay. Like she's <laughs> right? yeah. like <clears throat> absolutely terrible character. You know, like she's not a very I mean, respectful girl. Like so but what's interesting is that they're the part that makes me pause here the most in sort of this sort of is this healthy and are we pretending that this is okay is <laughs> The seeming that is the completely irrelevant. Okay, I, I know. Not, I know. Did you not see that Anna Sherbakova had smelling salts? To, and then she, the rumor was cardiac glycosides that the girls were given at nationals. Then a month later, she was still sick because remember, when you compete when you're sick, your body is like trashed. It takes yeah. so much longer to recover when mm -hmm. you compete with illness like that. Then there's the normal calm down after competition, plus when you were sick to recover. She was still sick at the team event, competed there and has been sick since. You notice you haven't seen Sherbakova in a lot of pictures lately. Right. He's right. in and out of the ring. Danny G was working with her when they were at the Russian cup final. Like they're trying to prepare her for worlds. They are hoping it's gonna happen. They don't know. You have to think about it. Like this is not the greatest situation. Uh, they are loading up. More competition breeds better results in this rank. They have a full stockpile of girls. And in many ways, these girls train each other. The competition, it is so strong that the coach sets the tone. They give technical information, but they're not going to teach Costa Naya that many new things in a year. Right. Let's be right. completely honest. She has to get the triple axle back herself. And then maybe she will get a quad, right? Maybe. Doubt, like who even knows? And will she need it? You don't know because will Daria have a quad? But it could very realistically be that in six months, in eight months, these shannings shift because Sherbakova has been ill. She's been growing. We know that they age out of this system. I did a whole video on it. It is the way that this goes. And I think it's very realistic that the Olympic team could be Valjeva, Usashova, Mm -hmm. And then it could be the three triple A's, or as they call it in Russia, the T, uh, K, O, S, C, H, whatever. Like, right, you know, they, they call the Troika something else. Right? The, the, okay, the, okay, got it, got it. Triple A to the other fans. Right? For them, it could realistically be the three of them competing for one spot. Like, mm -hmm. they were all on the podium together, and now they could all be going against each other for the third spot, which does change right. 
difference, right? right? In terms of like their consistency. And like, I don't think it's a slam dunk that any of them are going to the Olympics. So I think for Terry, and it's great because it solidifies, I don't know if you've been noticing, but like, I love Annabelle Morosa. I think she's a great talent. I was surprised that she was named the alternate for Worlds. I was like, wow, that is, you know, she has had an up and down season. And like, wow, she got named. Like, wow, that is like a big deal for her. You know, I didn't know it was gonna go that way. It, and you think like, wow, her dad helping Trusa, but like all these things add up. There are many, there's so many politics. And like, yes, she is a huge talent for the future, but let's not get it twisted. I watched the Russian Cup final. Diana Davis is improving as an ice dancer. She really is. However, Krilova's team. I has, am obsessed. And thousand times better. I, how, could, I could be, yeah. How much do you think taking back Kostanaya will help Diana Davis's results? When they inserted Diana Davis's name in all of those articles, you, you saw realize she's the reason all, they say, yeah. It is all so planned. Yeah. It's so planned. How much time do you think Igor Spielbond is spending on Diana Davis? You know, we never got the story on why Ponorenko left, but mm -hmm. how much do you think he is spending his time on the fourth place American team who could maybe get third place? Or is he spending time on the daughter of the queen of figure skating who she won't make these next Olympics most likely, but what that could do for him financially, politically, and what that could do together over the next several years. Think of the programs he could choreograph, think of everything. Like this is a strategic, and maybe Ponomarenko left because that situation is taking up so much oxygen. But Terry now stands at the boards when her daughter stays. Right. And Terry the single coach <laughs> who's in Moscow while her daughter's in Michigan. Like right. think about this situation and like hmm, her daughter, not the most talented ice dancer I've ever seen in my life. Not yeah. untalented, to be fair. I mean, she, she belongs Improving. in the mix. Are this improved. Krilova team was out of this world in both the rhythm dance and especially in that free dance, they which is so levels. stunning, innovative. I know they missed some levels on the steps, but the you know, all everything the judges, I want. All the judges went out with a Terry for her birthday at the Russian Cup. Diana Davis did very well. Uh -huh. Let me tell you, like there is no, uh, they don't have those like boundaries there. Around. No. Not that they really do in the US, to be honest, either. So it's just, they pretend more in the US, but there is so much wattage. This entire situation just goes, her star and power just becomes bigger and bigger with each one of these situations. Medvedeva coming back. This does nothing but validate her. The people that are like, I don't know if she would take her back. She doesn't need her. She has other girl. This does not, you, they are just kissing the ring, right? Like this does nothing but elevate it, Terry. She is playing this exactly correct. Yes, her peons, Dudikov and Danny G were not happy with the situation. Danny G, she didn't like his program. Maybe this girl was a pain in the neck in the ring. Maybe, you know, Dudikov may not like that about her. She also credited Hot Sergey with getting her triple axel. But think about it. Now she has to grovel. She is skating with the children. She's in that ballet class, which is like optional for people. But you know, Daria and Shcherbakova, my good daughters, go to every optional class. Kostanaya used to skip them before. What do I need to do? Now yeah. she is groveling back. You know. But and, and here's here's part of that groveling because they said, um, I mean, and then then when I understood that there were going to be stipulations or it was on a probation sort of thing, I was like, okay, this is her covering her tracks. But there's also Again, there's a shaming quality, like there's a let's break you back down sort of quality to this train with the kids. Do the exhibition with the old Danny G program that you like. This just, is the uh, apology to the nation that Terraza was talking about. But that's what I, that's, I'd like to give credit to Maxine Trenkov, who was like, why would she need to apologize to the nation? That's absurd. He said that in some interview. He's well, like, I, I don't care. He used to think that he was like the rudest person because he was kind of blunt about the, what they thought about Duhamel and Radford. Mm. He is, maybe he's matured outside of competition when it's not himself competing, but he's much more level-headed in recent years. He seems the only real person in this, in this drama of caricatures. Well, think of how ridiculous this entire situation is. I mean, it's so funny to me. And some people don't fully get when I do the videos like what side I'm on. And my side about this is like, 
it's completely right. Like I think I think the I think they're all queens, and I think that they're all power players, and I think that it's all absurd in the fact that I was just going to say there's an inherent ridiculous absurdity to all of it that like, you're in on. Yeah, <laughs> you have to appreciate the humor in like, right. and it's with complete love and admiration. Yeah. They call up Trankov and they're like, would you like to be present when she retires? And he gives a serious answer and he's like, that's between them. I would be laughing my ass. When she apologizes, you mean? Yes, I would yes. be I would be laughing so hard and being like, what does this situation have to do with me? I mean, he's a commentator, but no, like what? But then what? I'm like, I mean, Obviously, I want to watch with popcorn, okay? I mean, I, yes, okay? Is it Terry's face going to move? It did not move in that interview. She has gotten some fresh work done. She yeah, I don't think it can at the moment, right. yeah. She, whatever her surgeon is doing, she looks better, younger, more beautiful every time we see her. I mean, she was upset with those girls and the juniors at the Russian Cup final. We only knew because of some a little bit of body language and because of, um, the subtitles. You wouldn't know the right. face. It ain't moving. It, no. it looks fabulous. Okay. <laughs> Did she get some teeth work done? Like maybe some veneers or like whitening? They look, they're looking great. Okay. Yeah. She, branding is on, on key. And of course I love you know. have some better jeans though. I feel the Terry, like you, your jacket game, fabulous. The hair, the makeup, your jeans to the color of blue and the cut. Is it that they're too light for you? No, they're like a bit of like a basic blue color in the material. Mm. Not as nice as they could be. Okay, okay. But at the Russian Cup final, you know who ups their uh, ups the competition in coat game is Krilova. She's fabulous. She too knows how to make a statement. Jesus, I, I mean, Gorgeous. I always thought she was gorgeous and. She still is. It's pretty amazing. But I mean, <clears throat> I just oh, wondered the like psych like was re I felt like she was re-wearing that Louis Vuitton. I'm a little like I, I want something new. It's time. But I mean, maybe she's holding out for the Olympic season. Uh, she better. I mean, I'm sure yeah. how much money do you think Russia is pushing into skating for the Olympic year? They're gonna win right. the gold. Right. Yeah. And get all the medals. All the men. without without their flag flying again. I keep forgetting Who that. Cares? They don't care. Yeah, yeah, they know what it means. Excuse me. They picked Tchaikovsky piano concerto number. I mean, like a queen choice. Like, right. Just... <laughs> yeah. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. Well, for worlds, I I think for the Olympics, it has to be the Olympic anthem. Whatever. Okay. Whatever. Whatever. So here's here's my question. That so... is ridiculous. They don't get to have the flag. Excuse me. If Russia wins, it is Russia. Okay. This is yeah. stupid ISU semantics that means. Who cares? At the end exactly. Of the day, big drama for nothing. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. They win. I agree. But here's the thing: if let's say you do think like a gymnastics mixed group, they're not competing with Eileen Diaz on the compulsory floor routine. Like, come on! This is not like the old days of yore when they would stick a bunch of gymnasts from random countries. It's still Russia. Okay. Okay. Like I even know who you're talking about. <laughs> Like, yeah, it's totally, yeah. <laughs> For the hundred people who get that reference, they will be like, yes, queen. Okay. <laughs> already like, yes, writing. They understand exactly the shade that that is. Okay, amazing, amazing. But I just wonder, like, if the psychology is to break down this athlete again, to sort of put her in her place, get her groveling, <laughs> how does one channel that? If the, if the strategy is Excuse to keep me. people submissive, and to keep people like in their place, knowing that they need a Terry, they need the system, only they can do it. It's an honor to work with them. How does that then translate for these athletes to go out confidently and take center ice with any yeah. bit of confidence? Because she will be so fit. So she will restore her triple axel, which she hasn't been able to do since she left a Terry. She will be back in shape within the two months. It gets her psychologically up. If you can survive that and get back into shape, you are like psychologically so much stronger because you have to- well, stronger. <laughs> yeah. Excuse me. But like, yes, for that, maybe for that short amount of time in terms of maybe long term in your life, it's not great. But, yeah. to, but I actually have to say, 
I don't think it would be psychologically great for her to have left Terry, be with Plushenko and retire and have to live with that for the rest of your life that you were so close mm. to the world, to achieving all of these things and that you gave up. That's a big burden to live with, the regret of that. But do you think so do you think she doesn't have her triple axel in all of this time merely because Terry wasn't yelling at her? Like, I, I mean, they're reducing all of this, this figure skating I, technique right now to someone just saying, work harder. Listen, I mean, do you really think that's why it, it went away? She stopped. Because no one was yelling at her? She, there's a lot of reasons and I don't want to like, it's a very difficult session, but like, she, look, she, she needs a Terry more than a Terry needs her. Plushenko needed her more than she needed him, okay? You can get away with not working as hard in the rink, stopping in the program. Literally, so Galina Kolchakovskaya, you know, she was talking about this and, you know, cause they had the Kolchakovskaya and call her old coach in because remember they all have different techniques. She has technique from the Tchaikovskaya school because her first coach is Alina Jagun. It's why she doesn't really have the Terry technique. Mm. It's also why I think that they kind of put the onus of getting her jumps on her because right. she doesn't have the Dudikov technique. She really doesn't. Right. And she has a more traditional old school technique, except for that leg wrap. That, but, that, yeah. And that pick in on the flip. But overall, her skating skills that are so beautiful, that's all from the Tchaikovskaya school. Now the training methods and that much is a Terry, right? But when she left, she did less. And I think that when you do less, you can never feel as confident. When you've trained with the best and you take a step down, deep down, you know when you have not prepared the same way. Mm, mm. And I think that it's all just like built on itself. Like, uh, you know, you do less, you finish less, you feel less good about yourself, you feel less calm. And it, I think it's viral, out of control. I think she she's not in the condition that she was before. She was, and she left while she was probably changing and growing and uh, like a nightmare of a perfect storm situation right and yeah. I think that she couldn't get it back you know and it wasn't there as easy as it was before but she had to work really hard for it before but she was able to pull out great performances and be cocky but I do think that you know before Terry she wasn't very consistent she had great technique before Terry but I think it's the training, it's the discipline. And I think that maybe, yes, I tell you a thousand percent probably goes way too hard and breaks down their bodies. And I think a lot of why the reasons why she had issues with Plushenko is because of injuries that she needed to rest for. And while she was resting and trying to take time off for those, in, you know, you get out of shape, your body changes when you're at that age, especially if you're a girl and it doesn't, you know, then you're like in such a hole, she couldn't dig herself out of it. Meanwhile, she's mid season. There's tons of stuff with her and Rizanov, and like I think the whole situation was, and Plushenko, such an inexperienced coach, didn't make her train every day, you know, didn't have a grasp of the situation. I think that they entirely, it was like they fell off with like zero discipline coming from. Well, and it's that. interesting though, because it does seem like Trusova was just, is just wired to be the type of person to self-motivate and keep up that work ethic where maybe Maybe she was sliding, but I guess, you know, if you're dealing with someone who's so injury prone and you're the new coach and you know you're being watched, I would want to err on the side of caution too, because otherwise you are the one that wrecked her but because you, you pushed her too hard and she injured herself. Can you get the difference in like social class vibe from like Sherbakova, Kostanaya? They seem like more elite girls. I don't know that like a hundred percent, definitely Sherbakova, but Kostanaya seems, you know, they're smarter. They're like good students. They want like these careers outside of. Jerusalem comes from like an athletic family. She seems like a street fighter, like that gutter rat. There's like, a grittier oh. quality, yeah. She's clawing her way. And maybe they've had issues with her father because of that. Yeah. They want to win and she wants to be number one. She doesn't want that other girl there. Right. And she wanted to be the one and she wants to do all the quads. And I think Plushenko feels that, but they are changing her technique. You wonder if that's why Jelena is a completely different technique. And people say like, well, the Atari technique, yes, it doesn't last with puberty, but if you try to switch it, it takes like two years to change technique. Right. It's, it does not change overnight. And then right. like muscle memory under pressure. I mean, look at what a mess Jelena has been this year. Right. Maybe Plushenko has a grand vision of changing it, maybe. 
but in Russia, you don't have two years to work this stuff out. Realistically, she does have time, but then are you gonna fall apart psychologically when you used to be number one or two, and then now you're the last in the short program at the Russian Cup final, and then you're moving ahead? Like you, it's- Right, right. And the mother, so the mother wanted to be on the coaching team at Sambo 70, and Terry was like- Yeah. They found their way. I mean, that's the situation they need to manage. But I think that Plushenko needs to take control of the rink and take, if he wants to be a serious coach, he needs to be a really serious coach. And I don't think that we are there yet. So yeah, uh, yeah, that's funny. Look, no problem with the Terry. She makes it, she doesn't make it, doesn't matter for her. If she makes- well, And with these stipulations, it it seems like all of the responsibility falls on Kostranaya anyway. If she succeeds, it's because the Terry took her back. And if she fails, it's because Kostranaya didn't hold up her end of the deal. So it's a win-win. One for year in the Olympics. This girl will never skate again after the Olympics, even though she's saying maybe she you know, whatever. Yeah. This girl has the vibe of the, they're giving it all for one last shot. I think when you have that extra energy, I think so much is possible. I think you can claw back. I think you can- restore yourself can come i mean the whole thing has to be humiliating for her to be in the national well and they're and they're trying extra hard to make sure it's humiliating with her quotes with the skating of that danny g exhibition for all you know danny g put that in the stipulation Harry's like a queen like a benevolent queen though but she's forced yeah Yeah. listen danny g seems like a way bigger ass than a Terry. I mean, the end. Totally, because he's, in my opinion, arguably the the fraudulent one on the team. And so he's the one with the biggest ego, the biggest show, the biggest, all this sort of stuff, because I think he lacks the most substance of that team. When they inevitably split, where do you think Danny G will, do you think Danny G and Hot Sergey will both wind up in other countries? I was wondering, like, what will happen to them? Because well, did- what do you think is happening to Hot Sergei's reputation as a result of this? Look, if he were smart, if he doesn't get the Jill and his sisters back, and they don't get some structure in this rink that has been a circus, and I don't know if Trusova will work with him again. Like, who knows, right? I think Plushenko would be smart to put him in there. I mean, he obviously has some talent. I think the entire situation got so messy, and I think he is learning the hard way from it. He did help Kostanaya get back to Atari, even though he knew they would never take him back. Uh, I would think that unless he and Plushenko can pull off the victory, I would think that he would be paid a hell of a lot of money by China to come help them get an Olympic bronze medal. That is what I think would happen. Hmm, or the US come to Hackensack, they will flock to you. But you're talking about Rosanoff, you're not talking about Danny, you're talking about Sarah. Danny can write his ticket anywhere. If he makes it through another Olympics with the Terry, he could just write a check. Let's be honest, Danny is no one, okay? A Terry and Dudikov did it together before him, they did it after. Right. He helps the system go, but they could replace him. I, and I, and I, I encourage them to try because, because again, one of the major complaints I have of this school is that like, and I was thinking about it when we were watching the juniors at the Russian cup here, I was like, oh my God, it's like the same program over and over again. So yes, we talk about has IJS killed individuality that this dominant school where I'm like, I don't know which well, girl is cool. which. Yeah. We always look the same way in gymnastics. They all had games that fly in, do the choreography and do the same thing. It's a fact. Yeah. And it worked the same way with them. It's the school is always on top. You just change the players, rotate them in and out. Right. They actually had more longevity with the Crowleys, but there were a ton of casualties as there are here. And um, yeah, look, they don't have Medvedeva likely competing next year. They don't have Zagitova. They don't have Terzimaeva. So they have more people coming in and the boys are here today, gone tomorrow. I mean, what happened with Samsonov, I mean, will we ever see him again? Who knows? Like, yeah. there's a lot changing. If they were to take Razanov back, I think that's a different situation of trust and all of that that's harder than, I mean, the kid is, you can get Kostanaya back for one year and get her in line and everyone working. I think the coach, you'd probably always wonder that they're gonna screw you. 
in the long run. Right. Why are you going to yeah. give the secrets? Now anyone who's with the Terry has like the Midas touch, right? Like right. you, they will pay you so much money. They tell us your secrets. China would right. die for that kind of a situation. Right. 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 Any of the parents in Hackensack, he would make so much money. Mm. Trying to emulate, trying to recreate that that sort of scenario. Not even just recreate it, just like tell us that information. Like what right. the parents would block, okay? Mm. Like real money, okay? I would be curious what they really make in Russia versus cost of living and do the whole analysis. Um, but then I was thinking about Plushenko and this whole notion that they want $560,000 for Kostanaya, which are they charging her for the house? They're claiming it's the training. I mean, ridiculous that, that their training and the programs and dresses are with 560K. Are you kidding me? Are you kidding me? Yeah, yeah. I should take a closer look at that dress. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. If, 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 by the way, if it costs $560,000 to train one athlete, like they're claiming, that's a gross mismanagement of funds and like what are you paying yes for? exactly to not make the world team yeah and like the fans were like so like offended like well why should the, it's the russian federation that will pay it at the end of the day terry's not gonna pay a dime okay right and if they really needed to they'd get a sponsor to pay but she's not gonna pay a dime it will be the federation that pays it if anything but i bet that they will settle for like 20k or 30k at the end of the day from yeah. five i mean you always aim big with some big numbers right <laughs> This is what I think. Sherbakov is sick. Blashenko has bra a brand new school that he built, right? But you gotta pay for it. You gotta have students coming to you. You don't wanna be finished. You got a world championships where you got Tukdemisheva who's, could be top five, maybe could medal. You're against Rika, who's even coaching her at this point. Is she with Lambiel, is she in Colorado? Is she switching coaches after the world championships? Like what's happening, right? Rumors from the Federation on Plushenko. Yeah, we'll forgive the debt if you help out our skater at the world championships, get at least a silver, could help his school immeasurably. Yeah. I mean, you've got rush, you've basically the situation and you've got a Terry and you've got a bunch of coaching servants who are just developing the talent and she takes who she wants. Develop yeah. the talent. I mean, Lisa Berevetskova, Berevetskovskaya from Davidov. Literally, if she wanted Semidelkina, she could take her tomorrow. Right. There have been issues that she wanted Sinitsina, then Sinitsina got injured. Now Sinitsina has a quad, but she's got tons of injuries. And they're like, do we want her? No, we're not that interested. Psh but if they wanted her, they would take her. Yeah. I mean, they have so much power. I think it's like the situation, it's it's like rhythmic gymnastics. There's just, it's a complete monopoly. And if Plushenko wants to survive as a coach, he needs Trusova to do well. So right. I think he's gonna wind up shutting his mouth about this money because he has no power in this situation, except as a negotiating tactic for Trusova and Worlds because she looks pretty good actually. Yeah. In that well, and it's interesting, though, as I go back, like, Plushenko was always pumping his work with Trusova and how much he believes in her and how much he believes they're going to be able to do this, and just kind of always reluctantly referenced Kostranaya when asked. So, mm -hmm. I mean, it is clear that there is a connection happening here, but it's one thing to know the skills and tweak um, Trusova's quads versus structure mm -hmm. a, a whole program when you have little experience doing that she still hasn't done a clean long in two years let's let's be honest even so, with the atari system under her she was struggling with that yeah well, they keep wanting to add in every jump is she and her, because she and her dad thought that they couldn't beat kostanaya they couldn't beat sherbakova and they would blame the judges or blame and look the skating skills are what they are and they know that the, those are the quickest way for them to get points but there's also the consistency component, that, right. you know. And yes, she posted a program at Worlds where, she, you know, on Instagram that she didn't get to do at Worlds, but those jumps weren't all clean in that run through. And um, it's an interesting situation. I like, I don't think that Plushenko is 
untalented. I think he's got a years of experience, but coaching is different and he needs to humble himself. And it was probably way too much too soon, but he's trying to jump in at the top level. I was, yes, that's exactly right. And I will forever remember your history of a Terry's like, you know, rise. Yeah. And it, it took her time to figure out that system, even with Yulia, like, yes, okay, she went and nailed that team event, but then fell apart in the individual event. She's tweaking, she's tweaking. And then by the time Medvedeva, then Zagita, then now we have all this, that, but it took her a couple of, of Olympic cycles to sort of sort through what her plan was going to be. And now Plashenko, it's like kind of the first year out the gate and it's, it's like, go, here's the, all this top talent, cultivate it, go fast. You know, these coaches have big egos. And, but the ones who really do well, Frank, John Nix, Terry, Galina, like Tamara Moscovina, um, even Tarasova, they have like this undying passion for skating. At the not mm. winning, but for skating at the like they are so in it, you know, like even like you know others like want like even themselves, but like Frank will give a lesson to Jason Brown and help him out, and like they love the sport, the craft, right? yeah, so yeah, much, right. Does Plushenko love it as much as he loves the publicity and the attention and the money? Does he love the game? The was the sport a passion or does he just like winning and competing and that was what he could do well, be most competitive in? Yeah. If you listen to that interview with Evan Lysicek this week, he revealed himself. So, I mean, first of all, he's such a like fantastic bullshit artist and like you either mm. buy it or you don't. But like I've studied Evan and like I respect him for, but he said, I didn't love skating to begin with, it was my vehicle to win. That is so clear in with certain athletes. Yeah. Even Tara Lipinski, Carly Patterson, him. Some of these people who win, it's not the love of skating. They have a love yeah. of winning. Yeah. And like, he tries to make himself like a, a, you know, like a big macho, like sportsman. He can do any sport. And I think there is truth to it. But then he's like, in, you know, he's, throwing out a big buzzwords about business. I mean, he's a bit of a chameleon. I mean, he's made it to his top without a degree and like respect, he clearly works hard, but he wants to win. Yeah. It's not about the art and the passion for skating. It's very- And like, even if it wasn't about winning only for Plushenko, there's also performative. He liked the attention. Like, you know that he loves doing that like sex bomb exhibition just as much as he does doing his Olympic long program. And Evan, you could still get into that attention, but Evan, I don't, he was not a he he engaging exhibition skater. Inside of him where he needs to win, right? Like mm. he, there's been some sort of an injury, right? Where you need to win, right? Mm. And it drove him and he's pretty honest about it. If you listen to him, like then he tries to walk it back and what, but you can, it, like he said it and it was like flashing lights. It was like, that comes across. 1000% in his skating. Yeah. I think he yeah. enjoys skating and likes it, yes. He is not like loving skating for the art or the combination of everything. Like, it's just a different kind of yeah. thing, right? And it comes across in his programs uh, and you can look at it and you're like, wow, like that, it was like, wow. When he said that, like it revealed itself, it just, but even it's kind of a conversation we have sometimes with like a Valieva versus an Usachova because we see Valieva do the move because she's told do this move, it will get points and she does it and she does it well. Whereas like someone like Usachova or some of the other skaters that actually tune in emotionally give you a totally different feeling. And I think it's exactly what you're talking about. Daisuke was third at that Olympics, unless I probably had him win when we judged it on <laughs> <laughs> but like, but you could tell there's just a passion for doing the thing and being out there and exuding the joy of skating versus that this is a calculated vehicle I'm using in which to achieve a thing because that's going to mean something else. Even, do, even down to Scott Hamilton in 84 when he was talking about in his, like he won because he created a mathematic equation in which he could win. Mm -hmm. Whereas like someone like Brian Orser, who clearly has proven he is such a fan of the sport in which he also excelled. 
he's the one winning all the actual free skating programs because he's the one sort of exuding joy and performance in those moments. It's kind of fascinating. I do think that Scott would probably be a pretty good coach in terms of mentally and training and the no bull. Yeah. Probably better than <laughs> better than Plushenko, if you think about it. Like, I don't know about in terms of technique, but in terms of like organizing what you need to do in your mind and your like mentoring someone, I think Scott could probably get them to. Yeah. Uh, I think he mentored Evan a bit, whether informally or informally. So I imagine there was a connection there. Um, yeah, I, do, does Plushenko love it enough? I mean, he said how many hours he spends in the rink and like, the, but it's always when the camera's on him or present. And but hours in the rink doesn't matter. It, you could he, spend all that time in there. Those videos there. where like he's doing something and they're copying him, but is he really teaching? Is he really teaching that person and taking them and molding them? Right. It's a different thing. And the how-to portion. But that's that. why it's the a... talented ones don't always make the good coaches because it's so easy for them and they don't understand mm -hmm. how to craft someone else. Like right. Orso is a great culture manager, right? And I think he's got good technique and stuff, but he gets a lot of talents who come to him and then he met and like that's a skill. But is he like a person that's like growing each person on the way up? Well, he doesn't have to because he doesn't have that many take it from beginning but you know that's always like the argument like who taught and who really taught this person and that and there are you know very few coaches that ever actually teach anyone all the way up and right. then you do it one time and then you get everyone else when they're talented so right uh, but in that kind of a situation like you just wonder like can Plushenko really teach someone that's not and so i think by now you see brian orser has managed a ton of different personalities and done and learned and crafted and you know can Plushenko do it I don't know we're gonna have right. to and and, in, and and in the way I just always loved hearing again how one trains Hanyu versus how one was training Javier Fernandez but again this had little to do with the actual mechanics of the technique and more to do with the the handling of a personality yeah and th they're two totally different skill sets and because I, I think Plushenko does know the ins and outs of these quads to help Trusova and stuff like that. But again, if you don't have any experience with the trajectory of an athlete, how are you going to do it? was talking about how some of the talented kids are the pain in the ass to coach. She was saying that Johnny and Oksana were like too talented that like they would like, the music would come on and they would do what they fell to not what was like, just, she's like, you know, Johnny's supposed to do two brackets in his footwork and he does one and he gets a level three instead of a level four and Jeffrey Vettel wins the short program at World. And it's like all of these little, right things but like someone like Victor maybe not talented but you do you tell him to do exactly what he should do and he does it exactly you know like it's just like a different who was skating against Christopher Bowman I mean you oh. talked to Frank Carroll about that like he was like this is literally the most talented skater the world has ever seen and as a result he did nothing he was supposed the to the same thing with Sasha Cohen like when, yeah. when you're that physically talented do you have the other? And it's really the combination of all of them. I bet Kostya right. more talented than Sherbakova, but does Sherbakova more disciplined, right? Yeah. I think that's where, that's the- Well, and then again, like you're saying, those talented ones never really have to learn how to do certain things either. So then, so, and Plushenko, obviously a very talented, yeah. skilled, natural jumper. Do you know always how to put into words for someone that's not you, how, how you're doing it. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know. Yeah. The other big news this week is Jessica Kellang and Brian Johnson pulled out of Worlds. I know, I was hoping you could like tell me what the secret was here <laughs> because I feel like obviously they said personal reasons and they made a point to say it was not COVID. Right, and I thought that the press release, while I respect it, I, I think there are so many levels. It, I worry like personal reasons, uh, like, okay. If you break it down, you think like, okay, something happened personal. You think emotional, you think, but then you think, oh, messy. And, but then you think like, why do we think that way? Because we're trying to get rid of stigma of any mental health. And at the end of the day, they made the right call, you know? And I've like, thought about it. Like there is nothing at the end of the day. Think about how many times Phil Hirsch has referenced Carolina Costner bombing at the Worlds in LA and at the Olympics in 2010. Think about how many times Alyssa had a hip that was falling apart. At the end of the day, people do not care. They will make the comments about how many times she fell at 2012 Worlds. Right. That is what the, 
And then you think you're going into an Olympics. And if you don't feel, or your coaches don't feel that you can really are not up to delivering and you pulled yourself out because you know yourself in advance and you don't have that like horrible skate that you didn't have to like dig yourself out of this hole, you made the right decision. At the end of the day, I just worry that people are gonna label them for next year. But at the end of the day, I think that they made the right call. Like, so you think that, that their call was, they felt they were not gonna deliver a, a quality performance. So they're like, let's, let's just avoid this thing altogether. I, I mean- Personal happened. I okay. think that they, and I think that it probably, obviously if you, something happens, personal reasons, you don't pull out of a world championships if you're skating well, right? Like, uh, yeah, of course, happens. of course, yeah. Something happened off the ice, impacts what happened on the ice. And I think that that probably says that Ginny and Todd are good coaches, mm. that they made a mature decision that many other people would not have made. Remember when they fined Rachel Flat for a bad performance and hiding an injury, even though everyone is always injured? Like, what, because they skated poorly and they felt like Mariah could have done better? And you think about it. Let Ashley and Tim go. Are they going to do? They're gonna do solid. Yeah. Are they gonna win? No. But if you go and you bomb, people will bring that up forever. Yeah. I do worry that in the Olympic selection meeting, if you're going for that second spot, they're like, well, they, they couldn't even compete at the Worlds. You know, they compete now. Well, at least you have time to restore yourself, get consistent, figure out whatever is going on and have a solid season next year. And I think they're putting themselves in the best possible position given the situation. It's probably not, yeah. a, whatever happened, it's probably not fabulous. It looks like they're still skating, so. And their silver at nationals this year was not like their silver at nationals no. the previous year. It was already a little shaky, you know. Well, if you think about it, last year, they skated with Alexa and Chris every day. Chris was burned out and injured they probably felt like the young upstarts right like we're gaining on them you know they're winning but we're gaining that's a great headspace to be in right as soon as chris retired they became the senior team in the rink the ones who are expected to win nationals because this is a new team a new team isn't going to win they're now the leaders but Alexa and Brandon, it just seems like having Chris coach them and having someone who isn't her husband skate with her, maybe emotionally it's not this, it's not as good, but it seems like technically they have just been so business this year. It has just cut out the emotion and it just seems like they are just like getting it done every day. And you're expected to be the winner and you see another team that is just like plowing through. Yeah. That could really unnerve your confidence if you're insecure about your skating. And that, like, I think that this all is a situation, well, you know? Do like, you think it comes down to, I mean, as most American parents, like, I think it comes down to the side-by-side -side jumping. And of course, like Alexa and Chris were, had, had lost their groove a long time ago with their side-by-side -side jumping. And Brandon and Alexa seem to be much more on par with that. And that's where Jessica and Brian have been really struggling this season. Um, so and I just wonder, things. yeah. If your jumps go, if you <laughs> lose confidence in your jumps, then you start losing confidence in the other elements, right? Like it's yeah. never, it becomes like, we can't land the jumps, but then it's like, oh my goodness. Like now we're missing- Nervous energy now skating. We're the yeah. Now we're having this. And then it starts tail spinning. I think Jenny and Todd made like a really mature decision, like figure out whatever's going on and move ahead and that speaks to them as coaches because I don't know many other coaches in the United States <laughs> I can't think of many that would be like worlds their ego but think about like how many different top teams they have and it seems like they're making smart decisions yeah because it would be tempting to say oh we need world's experience oh we need to go do a competition oh you need this for this reason but ultimately I think you're right you stand to lose more than you stand to gain but that's experience for them. Yeah, yeah. They've probably had, you know, they've had teams that didn't end well before. Right. 
when Rockney was with Mary Beth or this, you know, and too much for teams or what like so they've learned as a coach. This is all the stuff right. that Pushko doesn't have that years right. of experience. Right. They know how long they've been in the game and they're mentored by John Nix and they're like learning the craft of this. So I think that it speaks well to them. And I don't think it's like I think Jessica and Brian can they are still the most probably the most beautiful pair in the country. Okay. Mm. One of the most beautiful pairs in the world. Um in terms of just their aesthetic and their line and their look and okay you can get it together over the summer and you know i think that this you know I, are there jumps their strength no they're never gonna be so right right i would also look into does the Raphael technique work for everyone if it doesn't have todd eldridge have a different person right they're not, exactly you know, he's not the only one you can call yeah the only one you can call Right. It doesn't work for everyone. Get another person in. It's, you know, I, that's why I look at it. Like, that's interesting. Yeah. But it does, like, even when they say something like personal, you're right. It just leaves everyone just all this weird speculation about and then what's this happening. Good for them, for, it does open up the speculation. Imagine if you just said, if COVID, you can't say COVID because if you have COVID, then people see you in the rink, then it's like, oh my God, these irresponsible people going into the rink or it's like they're liars or what. So they were honest. Had an issue. And an injury has stigma as well, you know. It could. Imagine if you said, I thought like, what doesn't have stigma? If you said concussion, everyone would be like, oh. Ashley Wagner can't learn choreography. <laughs> you know, like they're- Yeah, like, exactly. <laughs> yeah, yeah. 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 <laughs> like think about it that's the way people act isn't it? yeah <laughs> like, you know what it's, it's a world championship it's obviously a blow anyone that makes a world team and doesn't go like you're going to be disappointed but do you think ashley and tim have been training this whole time yeah they have to get ready for the olympics so yeah but so i didn't know if they'd be on to like again i'd be so tempted if i was a world alternate right now to kind of already be moving on to my next season you do, you have, that's a weird spot to be in. You kind of have yeah. to have train and half not and be in shape. And they announced early enough, it seems. And obviously there were talks before they even announced. They seem pretty gritty. Yeah. Driven. Like if they do well enough at Worlds, their team, if they make it to the media summit in a good position with a good finish at Worlds, I think about, think about like Adam Rapon. Think about like just the politics of now. You get Amber Glenn, Tim LaDuke in there. They have an opportunity to change the vision. Like skating has had these articles about how it's so stuck in the past and how it's, you know, so homophobic and so racist and so elitist. And like you get Tim LaDuke and Amber Glenn to that media summit, you give the right quotes, the media gets behind you enough, you can get you onto that Olympic team. At the end of the day, you got to think about, I was thinking about Riley McCuster versus Sunisa Lee. Yeah, Riley McCuster, you're a blonde girl that had an abusive coach. Sunisa Lee is also good at an even bars. She is a paralyzed father. They could zoom in there on NBC. Do I think that sometimes these federations go for the storyline? A hundred percent. Think about mm. how entertaining Adam Rapon was at the Olympics. Right. This is Ross, who we didn't ever got to know. Right. We don't know what his personality was. Adam right. had tons of it. Right. He made one of the big stars of the Olympics. Like that was a great decision US figure skating made at the end of the day. Right. Awesome. And was then able to be a bit more of an ambassador for the sport as a result, of course, afterwards as well. On an ethical point, do I feel for Ross? Yes. But they did have the body of work argument. They have the whole thing. Think about how much- Oh, 100%. I think this, this, even outside of the media move with Adam, I think obviously Adam was the right skater to send just for the skating also. Should they probably have sent Ashley? Probably. Right. Probably. the media aspect, making another star, but maybe they felt like sending a message was important, but they, they probably miscalculated that one. Yeah. They probably miscalculated that one. They would have had- But they not, said it didn't, it didn't, I don't think, have any long lasting repercussions one way or the other because the team event was fine. It gave Mariah the moment. It was fine, it gave Mariah yeah. the moment. Yeah. At the end of the day, not a great Olympics for the US ladies. Right.
Think about the article that Amber Glenn did. I read that, I was like, you know what? It was in the Guardian, maybe not the best newspaper, but that was a cool article about her coming out about, you know, cheating. Horrifying if that's how that really went down with the therapist. Yes. Horrible if that's, if, if that's how it happened. But the therapist was like, we're not gonna worry about that. And it's like, oh, that's a unique <laughs> choice. A print. Like, I mean, I, I don't, you know, that's. Yeah, yeah. Well, and it was interesting. Um, I don't always read the comments for very obvious reasons on things on the YouTube page or the Facebook page or something. But someone did say like, I don't know why I have to know about it. And I- It's, it's the that, whole point. People don't get it, but they reinforce exactly why it's a big deal. Well, are we exactly. but on labels? We're clearly not, but she's right. having to break it down to make it an okay thing. And yeah. again, it's clearly the importance of this story wasn't for you then. It was for someone else. And that's okay too. Yeah. yeah. And you're fine. Ooh, Dave, yes, you're fine. yes, yeah, yeah. I gotta tell you, I mean, even as like um, a gay kid growing up, the fact that there was Rudy and you could like see him like achieve something huge in the Swan Lake and be left-handed um, and, and just be out, like that was, that was a nice thing for a young Jonathan to see. I, I needed that. Well, it's interesting to me. I think about it in different ways. Like, yes, it was not, it, obvious, yes. Because think about it, there were no one, right? But I think the, of the progress like that we made from like, it's laughable to me to watch that like figure skating and they're treating Rudy like the gay one. And as Karen Walker would say, one. one. Yeah, exactly. I mean, that's the joke is on the sport because only the sport but thinks think it's it. You go from like one extreme this. where they tokenized Rudy, Rudy but he mm. was so fun and a great personality and entertaining. And, and a great and skater. It wasn't tokenism beautiful. because, yeah. Beautiful, yeah. right? And then you get into where it's like, oh, you've got 700 gay skaters. And yes, yeah, some of them are very artistic and some of them are also like, great role models, uh, like in other ways. And, you know, like you see all, what I'm trying to say is you see all the different varieties, you know, like all, mm -hmm. and it's not just one, right? And I think that it's the same thing when you look at the diversity of races and you look at diversity and inclusion and how much richer it makes the sport and yeah. why you have to include access and why that is, you know, it, it has made gymnastics better. And it's, you know, you look at those different ways. So I think that it's only going to help the sport. So yes, I think the Duke and Amber Glenn, being out, being ambassadors, and this, it's its positive for skating at the end of the day. Yeah, but I agree. People will be very uncomfortable about it and there will be tons of comments, but at the end of the day, it's how you... Stay relevant. Stay relevant, improve, <clears throat> like... Yeah. Come on. Amber Glenn is a fantastic personality for the sport. Trying triple axles. She's open about who she is. She is and, and, and was so gracious. And I wouldn't want to give an interview about how I totally understood why I wasn't on the world team. But she she was able to say it in a way that seemed earnest and was all the lovely things. Like, yeah, I was impressed with that interview. You don't fight it. They will look more favorably on you next year. <laughs> so that is, yeah, you come out. Listen, so I've been working on the playlist and I cut the videos and I actually upload them if you check the playlist before they're up, like there are different things that are just unlisted and then I release them at different times. But I was looking at the Bobek thing and there's a quote from Leslie Visser. She goes, I just talked to Maury Stilwell. And he says the fact that Nicole was on the Nutcracker tour and, when she and got injured when she could have been training for nationals, but instead was touring and making money, that'll have no bearing on her uh, trip to the world. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. Okay. Yeah. The fact that it was even worded at all. <laughs> like, yeah. yeah. The fact that Nicole was making money. <laughs> right. Yeah. Go bear it. Yeah. I was like, mm, okay. Got to. Yeah. Got to. Pack your bags. Tanya Kwiatkowski. Dreams do come true. You know. Well, no, that Tara got to go. Tara's whole career was made off of Nicole training. Oh, because Tanya was second. Okay. Gone, she would have never, it changed everything. That yeah. ankle injury led with her split with Callahan. It led with, oh my, it like re, 
it was just like watching the USFS. They were getting on their high horse about we're going to show her what's really important and teach her a lesson. And you got to be better. Boom. Come on, like you wouldn't want to see Nicole Bobak. At the, I mean, it wound up being fine. Michelle won. Tara was a new, exciting talent who had some drama. She had a bad short program. Came back like a fighter in the free. But coming on, watching Nicole Bobak at the worlds—that's what I want to see. You know? <laughs> yeah. Like Tanya was like the Ross Minor. We could have gotten rid of her. We yeah, exactly. Of- Easy peasy. Yeah. The three stories are Michelle, Tara, and Nicole. And you know what? That's what made the Olympic team at the end of the day. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Hanya was the nice kid. It's always going to be in the top four, but not- They got her token world championships in 98 instead. And 96 and did well. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe the better coach, but not the- Right, right. You know? That's what we want to see. Bobek and the drama and the whole, the storyline. That's what we come for, right? So, uh, individualism which again like when we were watching the juniors a little bit on oh, um, yes i wonder i wonder jonathan is someone made eye contact with me for the first time and actually waved to me this week what did you think about jillina being a biblical whore at the russian cup final <laughs> skating to samson and delilah did you i mean the same reaction? You, you know yeah i mean i was very aware i was like here's another program but what was so egregious about this music edit guess who else was a biblical whore michelle kwan salome salome but frank frank told you that's why he did it because it was the same age girl that did that even who danced the seven bales for her stepdad like an ass you know i mean these excuse me these other ones aren't act michelle was bringing you I know she was like, here, give me his, give me the head on the platter. <laughs> Here's Sarah, I'm going to take off one more veil for my yeah. stepdad at the party. Yeah, I mean, but it was interesting because that was, they were very clearly aware of the story and that was the message they were trying to send after she, she looked too young the year before. So they were trying to womanize her in this way. I don't know. I it had any relation to the music. It was like when no. Tara, you just give a skater like that some bum, ba dum, ba dum, bum, bum, bum. You just try to add some beats, some downbeats, yeah. like make them seem more artistic. But what was funny about this music edit is like they're Ooh. going, they're going, and then someone just turned the volume down on one track and turned the volume up on the other track. And then it was like, okay, turn it down, turn it back up. Like, I was like, oh, this is so bad. And the mon coeur, every time I hear that, that the da da da, all I see is Jenny and Todd. And 94 doing that like death drop or whatever that like lift is. That's still the moment I always think of in the same way when anyone does Four Seasons, I always can hear that scream from 94 in Surya's Long oh. when some woman freaks out. Like they're just <laughs> so <laughs> ingrained. I just think of the arms. <laughs> and, then da, 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 and then someone goes, ah! <laughs> when she falls. <laughs> Uh, Samson, Delilah, the best edits for me, well, obviously Miss Peggy Fleming, but um, in terms of using the whole piece, I would think uh, Jeffrey Bottle had a gorgeous mm. Samson and Delilah, and Meryl Davis using the, the vocal part in uh, 2009 Worlds was really good for, it really oh, I have to I have to go back to that one. I'm not recalling the music on that one. This, that woman who's singing, she's soft. Da, 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 da. Oh my God, it was good with Meryl in the yellow dress and the way they did her mm. makeup. She just looked exotic and fabulous. And Amazing. Art <laughs> of swooping choreography. And, oh. Do you know whose music I, I really do like, even though the program was completely interchangeable? I really like the Mulan movie edit that um, Akatiev is using for the free skate. I find it very effective. And then uh, there's a bit more percussive moments and there's a bit of that reflection, like a bit more ballad moments. I don't know, I thought, it, I thought it really worked for skating. I'm so distracted by how good her feet are in the air that mm. I feel like her air position, and she's very young and very slight, but the air position is so good on her, which yeah. is why she has the success that she does. But I was also, <laughs> The girls landing triple axel, quad. And Terry's like, where was your smile in the second half? But you know what? She's going to need it as a senior. She is going to need that expression. Yeah. So Terry knows. But it's just so funny that Terry is not like happy for her. She's like, where was the smile? Yeah, the- talking about Nikki's the Christ. There's a great subtitle. I mean, it's so fun. I mean, she's okay. like, 
So the you did just turn on subtitles on channel one and it was able to give you what they're saying in the Kiss no, of Crime? No, 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 no. There's a, oh, okay. there's a Instagram post about it. Oh, okay. That, okay. It was so funny. It was okay. so funny. <laughs> they were like a little bit bantering. But would you need that in a girl? A girl that's going to respond to a Terry being like, I smiled. Think about if a Terry said you would smile, I'd be apologizing. I'm sorry, Terry. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I'd be like Adelia, who was like, yeah. She did not deliver. I mean, they acted like it was a train wreck performance. She looked like she was not in her body. She looked right. like she was not over her foot. Like, it just looked like she was skating through, like trying, right. to, her performance looked like she was trying to do one of those like adult coloring books where everything's like super tiny and you're like using like, <laughs> kinds of colored pencils. And they gave her like big crayons to like move yeah. in. <laughs> That's the way her, her skate looked to me. Like she just was not. So now riddle me this, in the junior um, short program, are you not allowed, does it have to be a double axle? Is that why she then like does something like the triple axle, triple toe, and then the double axle, and then the triple lutz? Yeah, I would think. Okay. Would. Usually okay. internationally, internationally, you always have the required job. Yeah, it must be the double. It must be. Okay. They so must be limiting that. Because I'm like, unless I'm thinking, of, I'm, my brain is a completely like, no, because I, I know with these junior junior requirements, they're obviously so different. Like I find it odd that it always has to be the required jump. But um, they do usually, so it must be a double axle, and then yeah, okay, triple axle, triple toe. Yeah, because so, I just always wondered, like, would you not maximize your points? But if they don't allow that, again, ridiculous rule. It should be a double or triple axle requirement. You know, so listen, they don't let you do quads of the senior ladies. Nutty at this juncture, you know? Um, my brain went completely blank when you asked that question. So if I got it wrong, I'm like completely like- No, no. I, I, th I think you're, I was just sort of confirming because we saw a couple of those. Same thing with uh, Jelena, because she's attempting the triple axle combo, mm -hmm. then missed it and then turned around and did the double axle. So- I would say, I really like Semidelkina. I'll be curious yeah. if Terry wants her or not. She doesn't look like a normal Terry girl, but she had very nice skating skills, good artistry, good jumps. She does, I worry about the way her back moves when she skates and stuff. I'm like, I'll be curious to see how that develops over time. Yeah, she was a little bit more in survival mode, I felt, in the free skate, especially. But... Backs. I bought something and I wanted to share it because I'm very self-conscious about my posture. So does it, do you ever watch Bob and Brad? Okay, I don't know they, what that is. They're like very famous physical therapists. I'm the kind of person where like if I have anything wrong. Like I am web MDing it. I am like trying to solve it at home. I am buying. So I was, I've had shoulder problems my whole life. I have, I have a little bit, remember I told you that my choir teacher used to yell at me about the forward head posture. Yeah. So, and like, cause I have an upper cross syndrome, which is what that is. And that's like people, they call it like a million different things, but that's when like, this is too tight and this is too strained and this is too this and what. And like, I never like my shoulders when I'm skating and I always get like, pain back here and I've had knots and that's why I went to physical therapy and used up all my sessions on trying to fix my shoulder because it wings which is another symptom of forward head posture instead and then when I strained my ankle I had no physical therapy left so that's how I became like a big devotee and like Bob and Brad, like I'm going to say this at home and like because I have okay. no therapy appointments left so anyway I was just like dealing with my shoulders and my, cause I'm trying to get my posture better and I've been doing exercises and I research and they were doing the typical stuff. And then they, they said this, and I have to tell you that this has been like a life changer. It is like hard to rock, but okay. put it under here and you go back. I linked to it in the description. So you're putting it between your shoulder top. blades? Yeah, you put it between your shoulder blades and you put it on the floor. I'm just like showing it on the chair, but you like lay on it and you put it up and down and it it stretches you out forward. Like gets your chest open for anyone that has like works at a computer desk and like this, it's doing the opposite of that. And you do mm. it like a couple times a day for a couple minutes and you can move it up and down your spine a little bit. It has been like getting rid of the pain, first of all, and then mm. helping and like adding exercises to it. It has been like a game changer. Game. I, st I still game. want you to play with the role of your hip position. Cause I, I yeah. still believe that that will help too. So upper cross and lower cross are connected. So there can be something like, but this game changer. Hmm. 
So, cause I do have a little lower cross, my upper cross is like bad. And uh, so I had a couple friends get it. My friend Tim got it, my friend Emily got it and they loved it too. So I, people are always asking me for stuff. So if anyone, I link to it, it's called a back pod. If it's on Amazon, it was like $50. But and does like, it glow in the dark or it's just that color? <laughs> okay. I have to tell you, like, it is so good. And I know so you, can, like, so you can lay down in comfort and be tweeting for the skating lesson while you're uh, It is not comfortable. Okay. Okay. It is worth it. <laughs> okay. okay. It's, it's, the, it's the good kind of bad. <laughs> Look, I do it every day. So yeah. a couple times. I'm trying to fix my posture and doing my exercises. They have you do like Y, W, uh, Y, W, T, and L because you're doing the upper traps with this and I'll do it with weights and I'm doing all different stuff to try to like. And then where do you feel your sternum when you do that? Does that hoist up or does it stay neutral? No, it stays neutral when you focus on engaging them in the right way. But once, what the difference is that this pushes you so you stop because before people would be like, yeah, but you need your shoulder blades down and together. It's like, yeah, they literally can't. They're literally mm -hmm. like locked. But this pushes you forward so that they actually can get together so that they're not inhibited. So anyway, I link to it. You have the problem like I did, I recommend it. So anyway, it was a, like, I'm trying to fix it. Look, we're competing in June. I'm like, okay, we've got this many months. I want to look better. <laughs> so yes. I've it's got like, Tarskaya who's always yelling at me about my posture and I'm like, well, I'm trying. So. Yeah, Victor, the yelling at, yeah, I'm aware of the issue now. It's how to well, solve no, it. Yeah. Key problem because I had a huge problem last year. And when I was trying to do the right inside on my, uh, you do the back figure, you have to, on adult gold, you have to go outside, outside, inside, inside. And when I was trying to do the third and try to go right, I couldn't get my shoulder back because my shoulder wings, but there are also so many knots and it wasn't actually getting back. And mm. part of that is the tightness here, but then the knots in the back, which is all connected and all because of it. So now that I put this like, yes, I can go here and like I can do the edge because before it was actually causing like blocked. And then I would go like this and I wasn't able to go like down and around to do the figure on the ice, so different desk job adult skater problems having. Right, it's, yeah, it's it's like a whole set of things. Yeah. Third curve on my figure, Christian Fraser and I worked like all summer. And Victor would always be like, your shoulder so raised. And it's like, literally, I do this and I did it before and after and you could see my shoulders go down in a longer day. Wow, down. okay. Yeah, like game changer. Like it was, like couldn't believe, so. And like, I have the ball, I use the balls for like more precise spots. You do like exercise balls and stuff like that. But I'll link to that too. Uh, if people, if you don't have like, they say tennis balls, but these are like specifically like a certain like rubbery hard, like, but not too hard, like tension. So you do it all. If you've got a problem. You're you, off ice. This is part of your off ice regimen. Oh, I use it for, I use the, I have a vibrating foam roller. I have a vibrating, okay, so I bought a foam roller, you know, because I've been sitting with, my, sitting with my parents because part of the reason I've been with them for years because I knew that if I was home that I would inevitably see someone over right. quarantine. Then I can't visit my parents, especially before they were vaccinated and the whole thing. So my dad was like, how much did you spend on this thing? And he's Googling it. And by the way, nothing you buy for skating is cheap, right? Right, right. <laughs> it's like for a wedding or something, yeah. So there's there's the vibrating foam roller and then there's like a ball attachment. Guess who used my ball all the time? This like sphere for his foot constantly. He went from being like, how much did you spend on that? To being like, um, where's the charger for that thing? Because uh, it's I, I used it all. Mm -hmm. I always find dad so hard to shop for, but it's how nice that now you have like a birthday or Father's Day, like Christmas gift ideas. So you could be like, here's your own. <laughs> okay. That was a TB12 Dave recommendation from Boston. So shout out to him. He's a PT. He's really talented. So okay. anyway, it was a great idea there. So nice. Yeah. Listen, you got to like using all sorts of things on this comeback trip. <laughs> Helena has been doing bear the last two weeks. In a good way? No. <laughs> okay. 
and then I've, I've realized what it is. When she is getting a program together, she is so intense and passionate and controlling and lacks patience and like wants to get it. It's like so, and she, Johnny once described that when she speaks in English, she wants to say like five words at once. And I think that when she does a program, she has this like same energy where like it all needs to like come out as she's like ripping through this and like yelling. So there's a clip of her and I asked her what it was when she's coaching by Yule at the Nations Cup in 93 and she's saying something like Ciao Bambino. And she was saying to her that like, you're ahead of your music. And now you did, she was supposed to do two inside threes that I guess Oksana only did one. And when the video film crew was there and then she had so much like dead music cause it's timed to be like da da da. Of course. You no know any music when she like, when it changes from like the, um, the this lyrical part to like the Galenix was like aggressive music. It's like the and she's so she was yelling at her because she was not like on the music. So Igor does my program. Galena changes the program. Igor resets the program. You know, I'm in adult bronze. But footwork standard is not. <laughs> yeah, okay. <laughs> okay. And then it's like, no, too many empty crossover. We must show your level. And then you're like, so then she redoes. She makes it like, I took the worst fall doing this. Thing. Is yeah. that the one you posted? Yes. Yes. Okay. That did not look like it didn't hurt. Yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> the next day, I work with Igor in the morning. She called, don't, don't worry. This is not because you bad boy. Lukanin, ice dancer, me, professional coach, absolutely. Singles coach, professional, like, uh, uh, you know, like Olympic coach, like I talking to you like professional student. No, we fix it, we fix it. Okay. <laughs> she has zero patience when she's trying to get you to do it. And like, if you don't do it on the first try, oh my God. So if you've ever seen those episodes of Johnny's show when she's tearing apart the David Wilson program or she and her daughter are choreographing together when they're doing Johnny's Notre Dame, that has been my life for the last day. Okay, okay. <laughs> but then you get through it and it's all her way and then she's fine. <laughs> and that's all she needed. <laughs> Let me say. I got her. Josh P, who anyone doesn't see alive, he's a character. He wants lessons with Galena, so I sent him videos. And, and she was like, you think I can help this is boy? I was like, yes, this is good boy, Galena. You can help him. <laughs> All right, have him call. He calls on the phone. You're free, like, absolutely stupid. Stupid free, like, stupid. <laughs> He's going to visit her for five days. I want to document it. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Amazing. We need to like show that he's going to love her. Okay. He's, I'm like, get her some Jo Malone candles. She'll, she'll love. Yes. Her. I'd love those. Yeah. Pomegranate Noir is my favorite scent. <laughs> okay. I'll tell him. Listen, mm -hmm. dog, Oscar, she bought a new rug. She, I was not home enough. Oscar was very upset with me. He ruined my new rug. She took a video of herself yelling at him. It reminded me of when I went on the inside edge of my lust when I was too exhausted. Like, it was <laughs> <laughs> who did this damage? Bandite! Like, <laughs> amazing. <laughs> the poor dog. Like, just like, oh God. <laughs> I'll add it to the end of this. Sure. Okay. Okay. <laughs> nice. <laughs> Very cute dog. Okay. Oh my God. If it's not chewing your rug. Yeah. Oh my God. I was like, you have to forgive him. It's okay. Yeah. <laughs> he's a baby. Anyway. He's a yeah. baby. He's too cute. Yeah. Yeah. But anyway, what did you think about a Terry's daughter versus this other team in the ice? Yeah. I mean, if that's not politics for you, that cream of a team is has. But I'm glad to hear you say that, Dave, because like there were some flashy, typical Igor Spielbahn moments, like the openings and like this sort of stuff, but it was sort of delivered in a stale kind of or like there would be like a complicated <laughs> moment. You know, in and out is exactly it. Yeah. This is virtue like is, right? This girl is like in and out and she's trying to show you drama. And then sets up for the next moment and then is in it again. I agree. 
but like, okay, I don't mean this. How am I gonna say this? Have you ever bought that story that she cured her own hearing? Well, and, but I think more interesting is that cultural importance of that, that like, that would be all we could talk about if that was a US ice dancer. Hearing, hearing problem, but she can skate. Oh my gosh, oh my gosh. But over there where it might be considered a weakness, it just goes away. Let's cut the shit. Ice dance is all about responding to music. Can she respond to music as naturally and as well as someone else or is the taught? And is that why mm. she's in and out? And are we teaching her to look like this at the moment? Oh, I see. I didn't even think of that. Are there inherent limitations in terms of her musicality? And is that why? They downplay that. that she also has the greatest skating skills that I've seen, but she's improved a hell of a lot in a couple of years. Well, her X factor is is really revving up. Like she does, when she hits moments, they, they have more energy throughout the she's body. She's spending more time with her mother. Think, who's a bigger star? Have you ever seen more X factor in your life? Yeah, exactly. Oh, but I gotta tell you, the Krilova free dance was so innovative, interesting, new moves, interesting ideas. Each picture was beautiful into the next. I absolutely loved their skating. Do you know who I think would be a better coach than Flushenko? Yana. Hmm. Who was she the one that was like, oh good riddance, Aliana, we had to be so nervous about our health all the time. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Is a queen. I have to say, Yana, you've restrained yourself and been very classy lately. Only leaking what's, stuff What's out. going on? <laughs> You're only leaking stuff out, literally, even though I have to do a bit. I mean, the rumors that they are leaking out of the Russian forums had some dark shit. Okay, like, oh, okay, okay. Oh, we can't even talk about it. They'll be like those gay men talking about women. <laughs> okay, okay, got it. <laughs> no, okay. Twitter would be. Like it already isn't. <laughs> but interesting, I think I think the way people have responded to the Kostanaya, um, this this whole thing, leaving and coming back, it's always so much more telling about the person giving the opinion about whether they want to shame her that she's coming back or they're like worried about her mental health. They're like, I don't know. It's just really fascinating to see the different responses. Oh, come on, don't you want to watch? I want to see this Billie Eilish program that it was all, think about, I'm thinking about making a video about all of the Billie Eilish drama that has happened in skating. Like think about, I never knew about this musical artist, but she is the epicenter of so much Team Tuberi drama. That was the whole like- Zagiki Skating has made me current because when then when Billie Eilish comes up, I'm like, oh, I'm familiar with her work. And then people are like, you the are? I on, on on Apple TV. She doesn't like songwriting. She was very stressed doing it. It was well, yeah, it's not easy. <laughs> she loved the song Crown. Uh, excuse me. I love any girl who's like, you could see me in a crown. <laughs> Bracket. Da, 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 da. Wait, who was the one that they were all so concerned where Danny G like ripped off the that, crown? Okay. So that was the exhibition that Zagitiva did. And we didn't really understand it at the time because it was like so many moving parts. So what happened is there was some like YouTube dancer who made up a dance to the Billie Eilish song. And then he ripped off this- I see. Influencer's choreography. It wasn't like the official music video or something where you're like paying homage to the song. He just took another choreographer's work. Well, it was like an influencer online. Maybe right. this girl selling hair gummies. Maybe she's not getting hair gummy money. Danny G stole it. Okay. It was a Got huge it. internet drama. Okay. I do remember that being a big internet drama, kind of. And at the time, I was like, who you know the hell is Billie Eilish? Eilish? I mean, the real story is, did you know that, like, Medvedeva's dream was to skate to, like, Carmen and Phantom of the Opera? Which, like, yes, that says everything about her taste. In <laughs> but you know what Terry had Zagitova skate to the next year after she left? Phantom of the Opera short, Carmen free. Yeah. These are petty people. Yeah, that's no question about it. Yeah. And the, I, again, it's just like you talking about Galena and her dog. Like, I feel like this is like rubbing Kostranaya's face in the mess she made by having her do that Billie Eilish exhibition at the 100% show. and I can't wait to see it. Okay, I'm not saying it's right, but I'm saying it's entertaining. Okay, okay. Excuse me. Are we all not going to watch it and like evaluate the program being like, she had a point? It's bullshit. Yeah, yeah, exactly, exactly. I don't know what you're or trying to prove, like, Danny. 
What was yeah. the big problem? What was problem? Yeah. yeah. I really did like her See You in a Crown program. I mean, if she had been able to skate it consistently with a triple axel, it would have been badass. I have to okay. say, <laughs> program. Okay. not everyone did, but I think it's because she looked like a relic, like a shadow of her former self. If she looked as confident as she was doing the angel program, I'd be like, well, she can't do it forever. She can't skate right. for three years. Right. She's not right. Ashley Wagner. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. She needed to edge her up. Come on. It was the perfect for a scandalous girl who's mouthing off about a Terry. Oh, love it. Crazy. Remember what Alex Arashev told us about champion skaters? You must be bitch. Well, and that's the thing. I'm, and I'm saying if you then break someone and shame someone so much and they have to be so submissive, like oh, how please. does that part remain? She's For me, it wouldn't be able to. Oh, Alyona Kosternaya, she is going to come clawing back. You're okay. going to make me skate with the little kids? I will show you. I will beat your Usashova. I'll beat your Shobakova, who you think is good girl. I am better. I am winner. You know what, Terry? <laughs> And then Terry will be like, yeah, see, I'm the best coach. You, you look amazing, man. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, you're welcome. <laughs> Crazy. Love it. Okay. These are two girls, Terry, Kosternaya. They deserve each other. The same way Yana, Terry, they deserve each other. Okay. This yeah, exactly. Who well, cares? Okay. And it's much more drama than, for instance, I saw the trailer of that heinous new show they're going to do with the skating on Netflix. And I was like, no one wants this kind of skating show because look at what's already existing in skating. I want a docu-series on Sambo 70. Whatever. It could be about the seven-year-olds and I'm sure it would be riveting. I'm sure those parents have such drama with each other. I bet it's off the chain. Okay. Think about those. Have you ever seen those girls that are doing like single sow cows and like, or double sow cows and like single axles in a Terry's rink? They're like, oh my God, you gotta look at it. You gotta look at yeah, I don't, I don't think I've seen that, that low alone. Oh, okay. Not. I mean, the jumps are like cheated and like, cause they're little, little kids. So yeah, like, okay. I am sure the drama is next level. Okay. <laughs> Especially at that level, yeah. <laughs> Everyone always says that juvenile is the level where everything goes down in the US. It's mm, Okay. That's what you cover. Okay. I think the Olympics have drama, uh-uh. No, no, by then you've probably sorted through most of it. Yeah, exactly. Less people to contend with. This is situation, juvenile. Yes, very good, very good. Tala, okay. Diamond boy, oh my God, it's so good. It's so great, <laughs> okay? It's about to heat up, Jonathan. Like, it's gonna be so I know, I know. It's only just begun, really. <laughs> yeah. You've got like sick, hacking up a lung, red faced Angeloka, my daughter, Shervakova, who is going to give all of herself to win the worlds. I think we are going to be stressed out to the possible moment. Like they say that she still has a fever every other day. First of all, hell were they doing to get these like kinds of cases? Right. That, that, the repercussions have lasted this long from it. Yeah. Let me say there's something not right. Right. Not healthy about whatever right completely irrelevant let's watch this this is gonna be <laughs> it is destiny that these three girls are fighting for one olympic spot yeah That's although it's fun yeah oh i see what you're saying yes yes yeah come on nutty it's just nutty it's moment of honesty don't you just kind of want rika kahira to go in and land two quads in a triple axel and just win the whole thing just to stir no. it up Oh, no. it would hit the fan then? Are it's you kidding? So boring, okay? <laughs> no, she gives us nothing. But she I, would I, shake I it up. I want someone to shake it up. Marin Honda, and Sue. Fine, yes, fine. Give them that all the quads. Skating. Like skating. Skate like woman skating. Woman, <laughs> Jill Trenery, Karen Kadeve. This is woman skating. Yeah. What? Figure jumping. Figure skating, woman skating, Jill Trenary, gorgeous face, gorgeous movement, gorgeous edges, gorgeous dress. This is woman skating. Okay, okay, why not? Rika Kihira, 
It's okay. <laughs> woman. This is woman's game. Which we love. Coca Costernaya. This is woman. Ah, yes. Love. Come on, Jonathan. Rika Kihira, how boring can you get? All right. I'm looking for something other because even as I in watched Grandma's the house curtains last season. How <laughs> I have been to your bougie palace. You would never let that No, out. no, no, I would not. <laughs> not in those hues. Yeah. What was she in? Like the costumes that she wore last year, they remind me of like. You know what I'm about to say? It reminded me of like the dowdy choral groups that you watch when you're like, are they Amish? And they're wearing like, <laughs> <laughs> I get the, you know. Yeah, I gotcha, I gotcha. <laughs> the Corral from the- uh, Amazing. <laughs> from Doyle Town, Pennsylvania. You know? Yeah, exactly, exactly. Handmade. <laughs> Handmade. Yeah. Mm -hmm. They all have like the wire glasses. Yes, okay. Yes, mm -hmm. yes. All I right. see it now. I see it now. <laughs> you know what? It's not a fashion contest. It's they have a beauty. You know what? They they sound like um, the Von Trapp family singers. Like they're at that lodge. They sound very mm -hmm. nice to each other. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Lovely. Okay. Very <laughs> on brand. Very good. Good. Amazing. Over there, just like that. Кто такую капу сделал мне? А? Новые коврики ты их расшматовал в клочья. Бандиты. Ты понял меня?